I am going to try everything in my power to not be a jerk. But... I, like, I get, I'm I like a full-time student. I get scheduled for 25 hours a week. And on a weekend, they schedule me the entire day open to close. I'm on the schedule for eight and a half hours, both Saturday and Sunday. I'm like three and a half hours into my shift. There's so many customers and we have four people on the floor all day. <laughs> Only five people were put on the schedule and somebody had to call out. And there are four people running the whole store and there's so many customers. And there's How was everybody out there doing? This right here is the second video of the day and I originally did not plan on making this video, but this right here has got to do with American society at large. So this individual, this barista, decide to post their grievances to social media, which, by the way, obviously I can't really and truly judge because, let's be honest, everybody seems to be uh, posting their grievances to some type of platform today. But it's not so much the fact that this individual posted this. It's the fact that this individual is complaining about things that, quite frankly, normal, everyday Americans have to deal with. Now, guys, I'm going to try to be very empathetic to this individual because as somebody who uh, has been to college twice, who's also worked a job while in college, who's also at the same time worked a job in college twice at some point in time with an internship while also collecting a GI Bill. Yeah, people are going to come in here and say, you've got your GI Bill, and of course, I earned that. When you join the military, you quite frankly earned that little benefit, so I suggest you actually do this, which by the way would cure a lot of ills if you actually want to go to college someday. The fact of the matter is this right here. This person is complaining about things that quite frankly people deal with every day. You're talking about you want a union for Starbucks, which, like I said, I don't really get much on the union because I know some people have to go through a union to have a job, so I don't really go against that. I don't really talk that much about that, even though I do think there's some corruption in some, but I also think there's some unions that are actually good. But the thing is this right here, though. You're complaining about 24 hours and having to work all day on a Saturday. That is called life. That is just how you get by. There are countries out there that, quite frankly, work people for 40 to 60 hours, and they don't get paid $7.25 an hour or whatever. Okay, This is one of the reasons why I get pissed off with people when they scream about the minimum wage being too low. I recall working two jobs at $7.25 an hour, paying bills, and also at the same time being able to do things on the side to actually get where I wanted to be. I got family that's worked a lot longer for a lot less, and they've actually created a very successful life. This kid right here, for the most part, is just what we call the good old-fashioned suburban kid who finally got to work and is a little bit upset about the circumstances that they have. But guys, before we go any further, let's go ahead and roll the entire video. And why it is, once again, this is kind of sort of another one of those days where we kind of got to say to ourselves, you did this crap to yourselves, let's go ahead and roll it. Starbucks, and I am literally about to quit. Like, I, I don't know if I'm going to do it, but, like, I really want to. I almost walked out today, and I'm crying in the back room right now, and I almost cried on the floor. It's just, I, like, I get, I'm, I'm like, a full-time student. I get scheduled for 25 hours a week, and on a weekend, they schedule me the entire day open to close. I'm on the schedule for eight and a half hours, both Saturday and Sunday. I'm, like, three and a half hours into my shift. There's so many customers, and we have four people on the floor all day. <laughs> Only five people were put on the schedule and somebody had to call out and there are four people running the whole store and there's so many customers and there's possibly scheduled five people. <laughs> we only have 13 people employed at this store and there's so many customers. And they like, <laughs> we don't have fair scheduling. Managers don't care about us. Our manager was supposed to come in this weekend and he took himself off the schedule so he wouldn't be able to be held accountable for calling out. He just literally tore down the schedule that he was scheduled on and put up a new schedule where he was on the schedule. Also, he couldn't have even seen that he was scheduled in the first place because he didn't want to be held accountable for not wanting to come in. <laughs> they don't want to help us. <laughs> we need a union because this can't happen. This can't happen. We need fair scheduling. We need managers to hold themselves accountable for helping their workers they refuse to turn mobile orders off we need the liberty to be able to do that because there's so many mobile orders and i need to get through all of them and then people are yelling at me because they don't have their orders ready and they don't know what to do <laughs> and a customer was misgendering me tonight like really badly i didn't have their order ready and so they were just like totally talking to each other and they're like she's clearly incompetent i have a full mustache and beard <laughs> What the fuck? I don't get accommodations for being neurodivergent. I don't... Like, I can't use... Like, I, people get mad at me for using my sick time. I don't even know what to do anymore. 
I'm like at my wits end with this job. I really am. <laughs> now, I know what some of you guys are thinking. Claymore, John, Paul, real name by the way. You're being a little bit mean about this entire issue. No, I'm being very, very real about this issue. You see, there are people in this country, mostly the taxpayers, the ones who've got to pay the bills for the woke suburbanites who go to college. Uh, there are people who go to work every day. They experience an actual full work day. They may be making anywhere between seven twenty-five an hour and maybe, I don't know, $15 an hour. By the way, the $15 an hour minimum wage argument is getting killed because the more and more you demand that, especially with the inflation, the less that $15 an hour is actually worth. By the way, we've kind of sort of said that if you kind of implement that much pay, then the price of everything else would just simply go up. This where is an individual who obviously is not used to work. Don't worry, we'll get to the transgender portion next because obviously this wokester is a little bit upset about the fact that somebody misgendered them. We'll get to that here in a second. The problem is this right here. This is obviously another suburban college kid who has never actually experienced life. You see, when I hear people talk about the possibility of a civil war or anything, why the left's going to take over the country, i got to ask them a question. If you can't handle the simple work week, which, by the way, this is 24 hours a week. It's a part-time job. If you can't handle that right there and you're complaining about it, what the hell makes me think you're going to beat a bunch of people who are working class and do actual honest-to-God work? I mean, actual hard work. By the way... I've been to Starbucks on several occasions. I like Starbucks, but then again, I've used Starbucks in moderation because I don't believe in paying 4 to $6 for a cup of coffee that I probably could make in my own home with a little bit of, a, I don't know, YouTube recipes or something like that there. I mean, I'm just throwing that out there. By the way, these same college kids frequent that place, which, by the way, will be the theme of the next part of this video. The thing you got to understand is that, once again, this is just another young college kid who probably was raised in the suburb actually experiencing some form of work. And they, quite frankly, can't handle this. I think this is obviously overkill. Obviously, you guys can tell the individual is crying. Just just very, very weak look. And I've been telling people for a while, what the hell do you expect is going to happen to you when you get into the real world, when you begin getting baby this entire time? You see, the colleges, for the most part, are woke indoctrination places that create safe spaces. So when you go to work, guess what? You're no longer in a safe space, and this right here is just a result of actually being outside now, that safe with space. All that being said, we got to talk about the little misgendering thing. Now, guys, we already know that this individual is obviously having a hard time, mostly due to the fact that they've never actually experienced any work. But he said that um, this person misgendered me. Now, by the way, I'm guessing it's the girl who transitioned into being a boy, if it is transgender. I'm, I'm a little bit confused. Can't really tell in some of these cases. But the thing is this right here. What do you expect? You see, one of the main things, and nobody's actually said this out loud because people don't want to say it, one of the main reasons why I'm a little bit concerned about the whole wokeness and the 45 different genders or whatever, one of the main things I'm concerned about is the fact that as a man myself who did time in the military, as a man who's actually lived in the real world, as a man who's also had a lot of things said to him that quite frankly were not nice, there are people out there, most of which, who quite frankly don't really and truly care about that aspect of your life. They really and truly don't care about that. And those, so therefore, they don't have a problem insulting you to your face or maybe even behind your back. I mean, I'm the type of person who insults you to your face and then insults you to my back. But that doesn't matter. The thing is this right here. Why do you think this happens? Why do you think you were misgendered? By the way, that misgendering was probably just somebody who just somebody just misgendered. The reason why is because people, quite frankly, don't really care. They say, okay, whatever, we'll vote for whatever, and that rather is what it is. But at the end of the day, most of these people view you as some type of um, YouTube. I'm not saying this about the individual. I'm saying what other people view them as, so please don't dox this video. Some people view you as a possible, like, um, freak. You know what I'm saying? You're being ostracized from society. By the way... I want to go ahead and throw this out here. That transgender suicide rate, the LGBTQ suicide rate that I keep on bringing up in a lot of these videos, why do you think that this is occurring? It's because you've been ostracized from society. It's because you've actually gone out of your way to do something to yourself. What you need to be doing is actually seeking help for your gender dysphoria. If you do that right there, people may be able to help you out. Seek Jesus, seek God, seek a therapist. You might be able to actually cure these ills or you may be able to actually control it and eventually at some point in time, Get over it. You see, that right there is the reason why I think that this whole nonsense of just um, going ahead and going through with surgeries and crap without actually reading the fine print or looking at the details is so harmful to society. You see, these right here are people that, quite frankly, could have possibly, be, uh, possibly been saved. I'm not talking about the extremely extreme far left. I'm talking about people 
who, quite frankly, are, do have some type of actual mental illness. They, for the most part, can be saved if they actually seek out help. But because the suburbanites just uh, believe wherever the hell they've been told, uh, yeah, they go ahead and go through with this. You see, this is another individual who will probably find themselves ostracized from society, and they're already feeling this. This is one of the reasons why I say before you decide or before you consider going and getting an actual surgery to change your actual gender, maybe what you should do is actually seek out help to see if there's a way to actually cure this or actually help you with it. And, of course, this right here will also drive down the suicide rate, which, by the way, for that community is already extremely high. So, guys, this individual, once again, being exposed to the work world for the first time, obviously suburban, obviously doesn't appear to be able to handle it, is obviously spoiled enough to put the crap on the Internet, and at the same time is upset because somebody is misgendering them. I have said this on multiple occasions. Bullies do exist. I mean, to a certain extent, I may be a bit of a bully. Somebody in the, uh, somebody in the comment section who watches the video, they may be as well. I'm not saying that because it's bad. I'm saying that because it's actual life. Not everybody in the world is going to be nice to you. This is what happens when you get outside that quote-unquote bubble wrap safe space, and now you're starting to see what the real world is really and truly like. I'm trying to be as empathetic as I can, but I also know the real world because, quite frankly, I've lived it. Guys, John Claymore here. If you like the content, hit the like button, subscribe, share the video, sign up in the comment section. I'll see you guys later. I'm not